15 years ago, I started my cosplay prop journey when I took on building my seven-year-old Ghostbuster costume. That build was child-sized and constructed from dollar store parts, found objects, Christmas lights, black paint, and a bit of rub and buff, and it turned out okay. With the new Ghostbuster movies opening, it's time to revisit this prop. Our goal is to build a replica of the vintage particle thrower, or neutrino wand, that allows guests at Regal's Times Square Theater to actually catch ghosts. That's right! We are going to visit the world's largest 40X theater and give fans a chance to bust ghosts on a one-of-a-kind, two-story tall interactive digital experience using our replica prop. There's a lot to cover in this episode, so let's dive into the build. Like many other propping cosplay groups, Ghostbuster fans around the world are great folks. They share knowledge, techniques, resources, etc. with anyone that's interested. And that level of support will be absolutely necessary to build this special experience in time for Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. For our event at Times Square, we partner with the New York Ghostbusters. Ryan Espen and his awesome group of fans do amazing charity work in the Big Apple. And I was thrilled to be working with them on this unique Ghostbuster experience. Ryan and his team helped provide us with links to reference photos, ideas on how to solve technical hurdles, and general support. I also leveraged the amazing print files provided by Quentin Michaels and printed detail stickers from Colin on Etsy. But as always, my partner in this build will be the Chris Dotson, and I'll need his help more than ever on this one, because we have several different elements to tackle. This all starts with a fun retro style Ghostbuster video game, and we'll need to create it so it works on a very uniquely shaped LED display at Times Square. It'll also require a special media player and a connection to a wireless game controller. Speaking of that game controller, we'll need to either build or modify a wireless controller that'll work with the game. It needs to allow users to point and shoot at ghosts, and it also has to fit in the neutrino wand prop. And that brings up my focus. I'll need to build a particle thrower prop that can house the wireless controller, but also look as authentic to the on-screen prop as we can make it. But before I can dive into my part of the build, I'll need to talk with Chris about how we're going to make all of this work. Okay. So I've already brought you up to speed on the general idea of what we're going to do for yep. this build. We're going to build a special neutrino wand that will be the controller for mm -hmm. a video game that will allow fans at Times Square to point at a screen and shoot and bust ghosts. So cool. All right. So in order to get that done, we have several things to do in not a lot of time. We have to build the wand, but before I can build the wand, I have to understand how it's going to be used in the game. So we need to know how it's going to be a controller and then we have to design the game itself. So let's start with how it's going to be a controller. How are you turning my prop yep. into a game controller? Okay, so after our first conversation, I bought a couple of things that they're called Air Mouse. Okay, yeah. A lot of different versions out there and I plug those into the media player and it works beautifully. So you've got a plug that goes into the media player and then you've got a mouse, a controller with buttons. And when you wave it around in the air, it will move the cursor around on screen. Just like the wand that you'll be Just using. Just like okay. the wand. And then you click a button. You click a button for the left mouse click, which will be the fire. So there we'll just wire that to a button on the Correct. wand and we're good to go. Yep. Okay, so now we know how the controller is going to be in the wand. How are we building a video game in two weeks? <laughs> so I looked into that. There, there's a few different uh, platforms that you can develop on. Uh, I think we're going to go with GDevelop, okay. which is a HTML JavaScript platform. You throw in graphics and it's very low code. Uh, and I've actually been talking with somebody who's developed a few of those games. Okay. And he's all on board to help us out. So uh, as soon as we get him the graphics and the game mechanics, how we want it to work, He'll put it all together and should have something in a couple days. That's awesome. So you mentioned it's going to run on HTML. Yeah. So what player are we running this on? So we're going to run this on a bright sign on their okay. XC4055. It's a beefy media player designed to do graphics and HTML5. Awesome. Okay. And uh, it'll handle it with no problem. Perfect. And then you mentioned graphics. I think I know exactly who we should use for mm -hmm. the graphics. And I'm thinking because we're keeping this pretty simple and it's going to be a point at the screen shooter, yep. we make it look retro, kind of 16-bit, vintage video game yeah. look. 
And I think we lean on Dustin Hayes, Dustin. right? And his team at Regal, they do all the animations for all the digital signs and lobbies yeah. that we have. I think they'll knock it out of the park. So we know how the graphics are gonna get created. We know who's gonna design the video game. And now I just have to actually build the <laughs> wand. Good luck. So I'm gonna get to that right now. Okay. Now that we have a plan for making the game and understand what parts will need to be included in the wand, it's time to dive into building this iconic prop. I already mentioned Quentin Michael's 3D print files, but I'll say it again. These files and the instructions that go with them are perfect. I love them so much, I'll likely go back and build a proton pack to go with the wand after our event. Nearly all the parts of the wand were printed on my Elegoo Neptune 4 Plus printer. For projects like this, the Neptune's speed and accuracy is exactly what we need. And while my 3D printer is capable of very detailed prints, there's still fine layer lines that need to be smoothed. The easiest and quickest way to handle this task is with some photo setting resin used by resin printers. By mixing a little bit of baby powder with the resin, you can brush on that thickened self-leveling liquid on any part, then hit it with some UV light, and your part now has a smooth hardened plastic surface that you can sand and prep for painting. The best part is just how fast this resin sets and is ready for the next steps. As with all prop builds, sanding and priming are necessary evils. The longest part of building props is this repeated process. And while it's a vital part of the build, we'll skip over most of this as the only thing more boring than watching someone sand something is watching paint dry. And speaking of paint drying, we have a couple different layers of paint that we're going to apply to the wand. We first apply a metallic silver paint this will be almost completely covered with our final base coat of matte black, but it's an important first step in the process. Next, we'll get some toothpaste. Yeah, toothpaste. This is a very quick and cheap way of getting the look of edges that have been chipped or rubbed off over time. After you have the metallic base coat on your pieces, you will paint the edges of the surface where you do not want the paint to stick with toothpaste. Then you just spray the whole thing with your base coat. And after it dries, you rub off the areas that had toothpaste and voila. Nearly all the parts for this build were 3D printed, but I was able to find at least one part that I didn't have to print and smooth. The rear handle of the wand is a long cylinder and I was able to find this rather than print it. In this case, for $4, I got a 12 inch extender tube for a sink drain that was the exact size I needed for the rear handle. And at $4, it's a great price for not having to sand and smooth this part. With instructions provided for the 3D models, assembly was much easier than most of my builds. This was true of all the parts except the electronics. Rather than buying a pre-built electronic package that runs lights and sounds for props like this, I wanted this prop to work like a game controller. So in addition to having it light up, we have to find space for a battery pack and the circuit board from the wireless mouse. What I've done is connect six Christmas light LEDs up to our battery pack. That one battery pack is going to power the LEDs when we kick on the lights. So I'll do that. So you can see each of those is lined up with areas that we have buttons in. We have one more that's on the bottom of this board, which will go in here. And on top of this board, We'll sit our wireless mouse circuit board with the IR chip pointing out the barrel here. This has then been wired to switches and buttons on this side of the wand. We're going to have lights here that's how we control the lights. And then this will switch on the wireless mouse power and this will push the mouse button to play our game. After getting this all assembled, it was time for my favorite part, distressing. In this case, I dirtied up all the metal parts and screw heads with some paint. I then used some Fuller's Earth to give the prop a lived in look with dirt in all the crevices. To make sure this all works, I'm heading over to Chris's to do a rough test with all the parts together for the first time. All right, so here is the nearly done wand. That I still have a couple so of light covers to do, but... The, the weathering 
is phenomenal. It's my favorite part of any build is just the distressing. It's so good. <laughs> I mean, it looks it look like it's been sitting in a closet <laughs> for 30 years. You know, well, that's awesome. That's the goal. And I've got the switches turn right. on some of the lights. Okay, look at that. So, so, and then this switch will go ahead and turn on the wireless mouse the that's mouse. on the okay. inside. Perfect. And then the intensity button that they use to fire the wand in the movies will be the button that fires for the video game, okay. which is so the that's mouse the click. Left right. mouse click, all right. So now, is there a place that we can take this and actually test the video game? So yeah, I, I think probably a projector because I don't have a 15 foot LED wall. <laughs> You don't? Um, <laughs> you would think. Uh, but yeah, I've got a projector and okay. a, a screen and we can go to my garage and we've probably got 12 foot ceilings there so we can try that. Okay, yeah, let's, let's test it out. It all works. And on top of that, it's super fun. Now that we have it all working, it's time to button this thing up and show you what it looks like all assembled and working. Well, it's all together and it looks really good. I've definitely learned some things over the last 15 years, as this is way more screen accurate than my seven-year-old wand. I'm really happy with how the distressing looks and that we were able to give this prop that lived-in look that's so connected to the Ghostbusters equipment. I'm also thrilled with how we were able to leverage some of the lights and got the controller integrated into this piece. We finished the prop just in time for the event, so now let's pack up, get on a plane to the Big Apple. This is my first time back to Regal's Times Square since the remodel, and I love its updated look. This theater has always been a gem, but with all the new digital lobby displays, the brand new concession stand, great looking interior design, awesome recliners, and of course, the world's largest 40X auditorium, this theater is absolutely stunning. But before we get too distracted, we need to get our interactive experience up and running. Wow, that's a big screen. That is absolutely massive. That is huge. <laughs> this is gonna that's look that. so cool on this. It's a little bit more than I was expecting, but that's yeah. good. <laughs> they said two stories. I'm like, that is no joke. That's uh, what, 30 feet, probably. Wow. We've got the prop here yep. with us. We have the giant screen. How do we get the game on the screen? So I think we're gonna take the bright sign and connect it behind one of these okay. screens and run it upstairs to where the controller is for this. Okay. So let's get that unpacked and plugged in. We'll just see what the picture looks like. Okay, sounds good. Get this off. Make sure everything is unplugged from behind it. Yep. Yep, you're good, sit that down. Okay. Sit it in here. Connect that. Power. The player. Yeah, you want to hold that? Yep. Perfect. So uh, we'll see if this comes up. All right. All right. So the only thing left is to push the game to this player. All right. And we should be good. Here we go. Whoa! Look at that! <laughs> wow! Ah, oh, that is epic. absolutely massive. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna turn on the wand. Ah, oh, look, I've got the cursors moving. That is with amazing. the wand. All right, so let's try this out. Whoa! The audio is great. On this screen, Slimer is almost life size. That's incredible. That is so much fun. <laughs> Three ten. Three ten. All right. That's, that's the oh, number of that's, beats. That's a hard one, man. That's a hard one. Oh, oh we tied. tied. Nice. Tied. Okay, Not so bad. now we need some Ghostbusters to play this. Oh, that's the ultimate test. Yeah. Right. 
As much as I love the engineering challenges of building props and cosplay, nothing beats seeing fans interacting with our builds at events like this. A huge shout out to our friends at the New York Ghostbusters. They're an amazing charity group, and they were the best partners in this build and our event. It was so much fun seeing how excited moviegoers were to see over 50 fully equipped Ghostbusters at the event. And both fans and Ghostbusters had a blast testing their skills on our massively huge retro game. But even our two-story tall video game was upstaged by Ghostbusters Frozen Empire on the world's largest 40X auditorium. Is there anything at all better than seeing Frozen Empire in an auditorium full of die-hard fans where it actually snows? I think not. What a ride. This movie is absolutely great in 40X, and watching it with the theater full of New York City Ghostbusters was simply the best. And now it's time for you to experience Frozen Empire. Buy your tickets to this epic Ghostbuster movie now at regmovies.com.